Hi students, Pete Esterbrook here. Uh, let's talk about uh, what non-resolving dominant chords are. So non-resolving dominants are dominant chords that may appear in a chain or in some sort of sequence um, that don't resolve up by fourth. So the common resolution for a dominant chord would be to go up a, four, up a per perfect fourth. So like G7 going to C, right? And uh, so if you have a chain of dominance, it would be like uh, G7 to C7 to F7, et cetera. Or, you know, like the, the rhythm changes bridge or something like that, E7, A7, D7, G7, et cetera. So those are resolving dominance. Uh, if you try tone sub any or all of those dominance, you will get dominant chords that move down by half step. Those are still considered resolving dominance because they resolve uh, in in a, a very common fashion. Um, Non-resolving dominants or dominant chords that would appear in some sort of other sequence, maybe they move by whole step, minor third, major third, something like that. You'll see that maybe more commonly in, in uh, some pop tunes. Um, you know, there are some, um, what I think of as maybe more harmonically advanced tunes, Joe Henderson, Wayne Shorter, Woody Shaw, some of that music will have non-resolving dominance. Dominance just sort of hang in space. They're, they provide a texture, a sound, but they don't necessarily go to their tonic chord or some version of uh, a tonic chord. So hopefully that helps clarify uh, non-resolving dominance. I, I will just say that in, unless there's some other reason to make a different harmonic choice, usually the primary scale choice for a non-resolving dominant, and I'm talking about straight dominant, not sus4 chords, but straight dominant chord would be probably Lydian dominant scale. That's typically the, the first kind of uh, choice for a non-resolving dominant. Of course, if, we, if you're talking about sus chords, parallel sus chords or something, that's a whole different discussion. We'll do that at another time. All right, hope that helps. Take care.